Hello, my name is Ugi Miller. I'm 29 years old and I've been a member of Open Heart Sangha for 10 months now. In this video, I would like to give a little testimonial and to share the four biggest changes that happened in my life and in my non-dual practice because of Open Heart. I initially was a follower of non-dual teachings of modern Western non-dual teachings and I came permanently and effectively to open heart. The reason for why I came here and why I keep practicing with open heart you will find in this video now. I will make four points and the first one is about awakening. I took the guidance of to awakening which open heart offers in 2016. I was uh, kind of fascinated by the clarity that open heart could put the process of awakening into words. They could put it very clearly and I took the guidance. It lasted around two weeks. It was email guidance with pointers every day back and forth with Kim Katami, the main teacher of open heart until I awoke two weeks it took me. And the shift that happened with awakening was very, very life changing for me, even though also subtle in a level. What changed was that my basic sense shifted from a sense of unworthiness and lack to a sense of wholeness and playfulness. It alleviated me of the seeking mentality, this uh, existential urge to fix myself that was alleviated. It was pretty much gone after awakening. What still was in place where all the thought patterns and emotions, they still rise up. Even when you seen through the, the sense of being an isolated little me behind the eyes, but they happen in a slightly different context. Dealing with these thoughts and emotions and uh, liberate them is the post awakening practice, which I didn't want to do at this point. <laughs> so I took kind of pause of non-dual teachings until 2017, the end of it, when I felt an uh, urge again to, to surrender to life now, definitely, to life as it is. And at this point I started uh, a guidance of Ramana Maharshi style of self-inquiry with the American teacher Gary Weber for one week, year, 2018 very intensely. I had a lot of insights. I got accustomed to the thought free state and the stillness of my being or of the self, how Ramana Maharshi calls it. But then I got stuck, which brings me to the second point I would like to make about open heart. What do I mean by I got stuck? I was stuck in this thoughtless state. It was too much of a contrast being in the thoughtless state and having thoughts in everyday life. And the non-dual teachings I was following, they said it's all about having no thought. Ramana Maharshi's teachings say it's all about having no thought. And I felt that was somehow incomplete. I then read an article by Open Heart and I was blown away because it made clear to me that the thought-free state is even though when a sign of progress on the spiritual path, but it's by no means the end game. It's just a state. Why is that so? Open heart is based on the tantric Buddhist teachings of Sokshen and Mahamudra and tantric teachings in general. And what I didn't know is that these teachings actually have a almost scientifically clear understanding of the whole path from being an ordinary being to being complete Buddha. They actually have mapped out all the stages and uh, taught them very effectively and, and successfully over the past 1500 years and longer. But I didn't know about these teachings. I didn't know that there were teachings which actually deal with the whole path in such a succinct and clear manner. I found myself there immediately where I got stuck and I got from open heart the pointers how to work with that. I was blown away and I started to do the open heart yoga practice and I got out of the stuckness pretty soon and I'm very 
thankful for that still because one could get hung up very easily in the misconceptions of the non-dual scene of what uh, liberation means or non-duality means. So this is what I mean by perspective. Let me look at the watch here. This is what I mean by perspective. Open heart has the right perspective on the past, very clear. And uh, it's in contrast to the blurriness of the path of, of the non-dual teachings. These non-dual teachings of the West, they often th think they extract the core teachings of all the traditions, but in the end they cherry pick and uh, they lose themselves then in their own misconceptions. They re-mystify stuff that is actually clear since uh, millennia. I, I, I was lucky to find that out through the teachings of Open Heart. So that's, that's, that's a biggie. The second point I would like to make, uh, the third point that I would like to make is the point of experience, of insight. Getting out of the stuckness, I was rewarded with, with being, being shown the real path to complete liberation, to complete Buddhahood, where every phenomena, every emotion, every thought is seen through the moment is, is, it arises. And you don't lose time by trying to fabricate a state of stillness or a state of oneness, which are still fabrications of the mind. And many teachings lose themselves in, in these states of oneness and states of thought freeness. So what can I say after 10 months of, of practicing with open heart yoga, the main practice of open heart and following the teachings, I have a completely different experience now. I could best describe it as an ongoing kind of psychedelic trip all the colors, all the phenomena are very clear, extremely sharp, extremely vivid. The sounds and the colors, everything is very, very alive, but still very subtly empty. It's, it's two, two things at the same time, very transparent and very alive, very full. Also the sense of this all being one experience, one flow ex of experience is also there. The, the sense of non-duality is permanent. That there is not a me and the world. So this is ha happening after a few months with open. This has happened or started to happen after a few months with, with open heart. And it's actually pretty common with open heart that things move very, very quickly because the practices are designed to effectively bring bring you forth on the path so that you can achieve complete Buddhahood as soon as possible. It's very clear about that. There's no muddiness, no fogginess about that. That's the goal. And the practices are proven practices from thousands of years. And <laughs> you cannot feel anything but grateful to be in a in a practice community who practice like that. It really makes all the difference. Okay, that, that was my experience. So uh, it generates insight. You have a steady progress line with open heart because it is clear on the stages, it's clear on the maps, it's clear on the traps, it's clear on the pitfalls that you can fall into. It makes all the difference. Even though the practices um, can look strange at first. I was skeptical at first too, but they all have their place and they're not religious in any way. So if you want to use your skepticism, then try it out instead of uh, follow prejudices about practices like guru yoga or deity yoga. It's not meant the way you think they are meant. <laughs> and I, I, I'm, I studied philosophy and I'm a very rational person. And I dealt with the same skepticism, but I was proven wrong. Fortunately, that's why I can make this video now. That's why I can share my, my experience here. And the fourth point is, is guidance. Open heart provides a community and a teacher student relationship 
which is real guidance, real teaching. Modern non-duality and modern Buddhism often lacks this aspect, or most of the time. When Buddhist teachers come to the West, they don't come often, and when they come, they fill halls, but there's not really the possibility to have one-on-one -on -one guidance to talk with the teacher. Same with uh, modern Western non-duality teachers who often um, are too big already or don't even offer one-to-one -one guidance. With open heart, the emphasis is on proper guidance. It is highly, highly uh, essential to have that so that you don't get stuck in a particular misconception or a particular obstacle too much and too long and one can get easily distracted or obstructed in such uh, obstacles for a very long time without noticing and this one-on-one -on -one guidance that you get from open heart you have a very alive community with advanced practitioners which are happy to help you with guidance with pointers and you have fantastic teachers who you can address everything to them you, you can you can come with any obstacles you experience on the path and they will give you a a pinpointed answer which is specifically for you and your situation and this makes all the difference it really does many times i i could benefit from that already which i couldn't before i was only told um do self-inquiry <laughs> But if you're doing something wrong about that or n not properly, you, you just get stuck with, with your way of doing it. You need a teacher, you need someone who points out the flaws of your pack practice if you are in flaws. And so many people who practice meditation and non-dual practices have a flawed practice. So yeah, these were the four points. I wanted to make. I hope that was helpful. I hope this explained my move to open heart and open heart is the promise and the opening up of the possibility that complete liberation, complete Buddhahood is indeed and actually possible. When you are at a certain stage of practice, you also begin to sense that yourself. You just see that this, that you will end up there. And I can attest, attest to that. It's not some mystic goal somewhere very far, but it's, it's, it's a possibility. And you have to face that possibility if you want to go this way. And this is the beautiful challenge. Yes, so that's my testimonial. If you have any questions about Open Heart, you can join one of their uh, Facebook groups, openheart.fi. Uh, Pragmatic Mahamudra, or you can also ask me about my practice uh, anytime. Ugi Miller is my name. Um, with any questions, please just ask them. It's worth it. It's worth to try it. It's worth to actually make this one step into a real practice. And it is. I can attest for that. And um, I'm eternally, gra uh, eternally grateful for Open Heart, what it does to me and what it keeps doing to me. And I wish you all the same. I wish you all the benefit of, of a real practice and the proper understanding and proper insight. Thank you very much and have a beautiful end of the year.